You, you couldn't have done that, no. It just isn't yours. So consequently, I, I didn't show her very much. And then my husband and I moved to Santa Fe in the uh, early 90s. And by the mid-90s, I was starting to draw musicians. And these are three examples of the kind of thing that I did. But I have to say that um, it, it was something that I didn't feel compelled to continue uh, because of perhaps a lot of complex reasons. But the origins of working with live musicians did happen there, and uh, very successfully, I would say. And what, can you tell us what, what sparked that? Uh, you told me before that you, when you listen to music, you have to kind of sit on your hands, but then something, something happened out there. Well, because the music, of course, comes from people, and people all have, a, to me, a very interesting look. I'm, I am, by nature, a portrait painter, I suppose you could say. I'm just fascinated by the way people look, the way they move. And musicians provide us with so much innate drama. Uh, the way they dress, the way they function, uh, the instruments. And uh, for instance, Olga, those are two completely different views of her. One is showing her uh, in the middle of a song with a very expressive um, outgoing kind of expression, and then the middle painting is showing her in a, in a more introspective mood, and we've all seen that with musicians, the varying moods of different songs, or even within one song. So then coming down to New Orleans in 2011, now I don't know how many people here have been to Preservation Hall, um, could I maybe see a a bit of a show of hands? Just about everybody. <laughs> well, the paintings, you may not know, were done by my dad, the paintings that are on the walls. And of course, I saw them there in 1977. They are mostly the same paintings. There, there are some that were there that are gone, but there are four that show up in my artworks that uh, certainly have been there a long time. And I was always fascinated by them, but I never thought they'd end up in artworks that I would do. And the way that I got down here is, is just a little bit of a story. To return to New Orleans was completely unexpected. Um, in the summer of 2011, I had been through a drought in my art for some years. Um, and that year, I had rededicated myself entirely to work in art. And by the summer, things were really cooking. They were just going very well. And just at that moment, the Preservation Hall Jazz Band came to our local theater, and we went. And I'll never forget it. They, uh, they did a second line at the end of the program, came through the theater, up and down the aisles, and they were exhorting people to join them. Well, hardly anyone did. But when they came by us, I said, come on, John, we're going. Well, at the end of that second line, they said, come on, go up on stage with us. And I had this incredible moment up on stage. There was this band. I didn't know who these musicians were. I knew who Ben Jaffe was, but only because I'd seen pictures of him. He was a little kid when I had been here last. I didn't know the rest of the musicians, but I sure knew the music. And there I was, up with them on stage, and looking out into the audience, there were people I knew. And I had this odd feeling of where I am now is my future, and what I'm seeing out there is my past. It was just incredible. But I didn't know yet that I was going to be in New Orleans. By early fall, my series of drawings was not, it, it was coming to a close. It, it, it was just as if a door was, was shutting again. And I said to my friend John Ed, I said, I, I just don't know what to do. And he said, well, you know what? Maybe it's time to come back to New Orleans. Maybe you should try that. So I talked with my husband, John, and he said, you know what, why not? Let's do it. Came back here, first night went to Preservation Hall with a sketchbook in hand. But now first we have to look at some Rockmores, I think, <laughs> so that we understand the importance of this. Now these pictures I photographed myself a few weeks ago, because we could not find any high-res images of these paintings. 
So the people there took them off the walls. We took them to the courtyard, and I photographed them myself. And as you can see, they're just beautiful, and you can't really see them very well in the hall. Now, these were all done upstairs. These were not painted in the hall itself. These are all life-size or bigger. Uh, my dad's studio, in the time these were painted, which would have been 63 to 65, his studio was right upstairs from Preservation Hall. So when you're in the performance space, his painting studio was right upstairs. And Larry Borenstein would send musicians up there, keep him filled with canvases, and he was just cranking these out. So I think now we're having a little segue to some technical things of the work that I do, and then we will get to those first drawings. And I want to say something about that last statement. Um, Ashley is here. She's at the back of the room. And she's um, the, are you still the education development director? Yes. Um, when I came back to town, I had been in touch with Preservation Hall by email, but I, I really didn't know anyone there. When I actually showed up with husband John, I said, is Jeanette here? That's the person I'd been communicating with. And they said, no, Jeanette isn't here. And I said, oh, geez. So I went and got in line. And as I was standing there, something just kicked in. Like DNA just said, wait a minute, Rockmore's daughter doesn't stand in line at Preservation <laughs> Hall. So I marched back up, and I just said, I'm Rockmore's daughter. And Ashley was the one at the door. And she said, come on in. <laughs> That was the beginning, Ashley. If you hadn't been so nice, I might still be in Santa Fe. <laughs> so the reason for the gloves that I wear almost all the time is Ray knows. And the gloves actually have become an asset. Uh, but as you can imagine, it was difficult to figure out how to make drawings work when you're wearing gloves all the time. And then the other point was, what do you draw with that will make a statement? Uh, pencil is not strong enough to make a, a really good, strong statement. And that's what I wanted. And I had worked with fountain pens all my life. So I tried a whole bunch of different ones to see what would work in this environment, working with live music. And it ended up being one particular pen that I use to this day, uh, the one on the far right. But all of them are really, really neat pens. So here are the very first, like this is the first drawing I did at Preservation Hall in October 2011. And these are somewhat out of order, but all of these are the first months. Um, I was going back and forth between Santa Fe and New Orleans. Uh, trying to figure out how to make a life here, or was it even right to make a life here? And in the meantime, going every night to Preservation Hall, and soon to Frenchman Street, soon to Palm Court. But Preservation Hall was home, and it's where I first met so many amazing musicians. You told me when we were talking that one of these uh, early drawings, these are all done within the first couple months. Is that yes. Right? You told me that. Some of them are, are, you know, you're finding your way, but there's one of them that kind of, uh, there's an epiphany moment, I guess, or that, that brought you forward towards your current style. I was wondering if you could well, talk about Well, what, what I remember saying to you is that all of them except the one of Jeffrey Hills, the one at the top right, I would say are good efforts, but if that was the best I was going to do, I wasn't going to get very far. They're not really too much different from what most any other artist could do. Um, but what mattered is what I felt when I did them. I could see from what I felt that I could do better and I could do more. I just needed time. And the one of Jeffrey Hills was one of the breakout moments. Um, it's a large drawing. Some of these are much smaller. Uh, we, we can't see scale here. Some of these are 11 by 14 or 9 by 12. The Jeffrey Hills is 14 by 17. 
And working with a larger piece of paper and with water media, uh, it just opened the whole thing up. So those were the beginnings. And then over time, my father's pictures started coming in. So all of the pictures we'll see in this little slideshow will have Rockmore's either way in the background or as a feature in the drawing. Absolutely. And at the hall, of course, is a generational uh, kind of establishment at this point, too, at the Jackson. So I think that's a really interesting It certainly thing. is. And in fact, when um, up on that stage in Santa Fe, when the music ended, and I went up to Ben, ben uh, Jaffe, and I said, hi, Ben, you won't remember me. I'm Emily Rockmore's daughter. And he just said, you're family. Again, a moment that just said, welcome. Come on in. <laughs> So these paintings, anyone who spends as much time as I have at Preservation Hall, you really get to know them well, and they really are family. Uh, these musicians uh, were all people who were part of the original Preservation Hall family of musicians, and it was very special for them to be documented in this way. Not all of them liked the end result of what my dad did with them, but they they liked the attention and they liked being honored by being painted. And then after I switched from my first set of pens and, and moved to a pen that had a more flexible nib, which means more ink can come out, there was a gradual transformation of the drawings. They became <coughs> looser, more ink coming out meant messier. And at first, with the gloves and all that extra ink, I didn't quite know what to do with it. So these are sort of the in-between state uh, transition from the early attempts with pure cross-hatching now to becoming a, perhaps a bit more painterly, even as they stay as drawings. And this is the drawing that has the Schwerza of Joe Oliver. And looking at these, I can see, uh, being a right-handed artist, the right side of the picture gets very smudged. Um, so at that time, I wasn't yet finding a way to think of the picture as a whole. I was just intent on getting that likeness or getting the position of the musician. Uh, but later, um, as you'll see, the, the use of the ink and the gloves becomes uh, fully artistically developed. And these are, of course, at different venues all over town. The Spotted Cat, Fritzl's, um, Maple Leaf Bar, uh, Chickiwawa, the former uh, Urban Mayfield Playhouse, now the Jazz Playhouse, and here we have one of Preservation Hall. And then here's just a little excerpt of a broadcast that shows the, pen, the use of the pen and the gloves. And it was a revelation to me to see it because I don't see what I'm doing as I'm working.
Well, this was after um, I saw the possibilities of what one can do uh, with, the, with the ink and with the gloves. I'm really using the gloves as a brush. Um, and instead of trying to be neat about the drawings, my tendency is to, to be very neat with, with materials. This was embracing the mess and, and a cer certain wildness. And in fact, my husband at a certain point watching me draw a few years ago, he said, you know, it's the most interesting combination of precision and abandon. And I thought that was such a great phrase. So thank you for that, husband. <laughs> So then this is after the use of the ink and the gloves is, is becoming fully developed and these are all at Preservation Hall. Um, and as you see, many of them are certainly a lot wilder than the earlier ones. And this was a time in 2014 when by now I was feeling very confident in the work, very secure in my place working at Preservation Hall. It is certainly not an easy place to work. Um, everyone who has been there knows it's very tight. You don't have a lot of space. Uh, it's very popular. There are just a ton of people there all the time. So it's challenging, but the end result can be marvelous. And the energy in the room, the energy of the, the music, and the feeling of the history that comes through for all of us when we're there, that's, that's what I'm feeling when I'm working on these drawings. It's both that aspect of my father's work, the ghost of my father, the ghost of the old musicians, and then that, that beautiful continuity. And of course, the special old chairs. I love those chairs, they're just beautiful. We come to just a few recent drawings. Um, in these, the, the technique of the smudges, um, the use of the gloves is fully developed. And uh, there's, um, I would say, just a feeling of far more confidence in the depictions of the people and the settings. You can see from this group that pianists are a favorite of mine. <laughs> Um, there's something about the way pianists all have their unique stance at the piano, the posture, the way they interact with other musicians, that fascinates me. And uh, I've been fortunate to draw many a great pianist in this town. This is a young singer. He's going to be at my art gallery next, uh, a week from this Saturday, leading a trio. We're going to have a little, little celebration. Everyone's invited. <laughs> And Nicholas Payton playing the piano instead of the trumpet this time. And then these last three are at Preservation Hall, uh, done this summer. The wonderful Charlie Gabriel. With Creole George looking down on him. And then David Harris, whom we will hear tonight.
We have one tiny snippet left of film. This was at the Spotted Cat in July. A total stranger shot this video and I said, me, I have that. <laughs> that is very fun. <laughs> And then that's the finished piece. 